Thanks for deciding to join us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics, because we know you could be doing something else. So it's much appreciated that you're here with us. And we're coming to you from our studios that are second to none, provided by First Star Logistics. And our guest is a great one um, in terms of understanding football, communicating football, and being a tough football player. Zach Moss, running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. Very complete football player, good runner, can catch the football, can run good routes. Where he, he, he catches my eye as a former offensive lineman, he will stick his nose in there against anybody in blitz pickup. He protects his quarterback at all costs. Love that about him. And he's got a lot of good things to say about uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, even though they're off to a, a slow start. Uh, he's been around the league for a while. He knows what it takes to win. He's a winner. He believes in the locker room, believes in his teammates. And 12 one-game seasons left. First one against New York Giants. And he is fully aware of it. He knows they got to go to New York and get a W. Welcome to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we're coming to you from a studio that they provide for us that is second to none. And we've got a guest that is a very special guest, because this guy is a great football player, an incredibly intelligent human being, and a great human being all around. We're talking about Zach Moss, running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. Appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. I know uh, I know it's a, it's a busy time, obviously. This is the day after a football game. And I remember those days, boy, wake up a little bit sore and try to get a lubrication going here a little bit in the joints and try to get going again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, appreciate you having me on. Definitely. So that game was an offensive instant classic yesterday. I mean, the Ravens Bengals, you know, when you look at it, Oh man, it's a, it's a division slobber knocker. You know, you're talking about physicality, defensive, it was physical. I mean, there was a lot of physicality in that football game, but both offenses just performed and executed at such a high level. I mean, the quarterbacks were unbelievable in that football game. What what was it like playing in that game? Did you have a feeling that, man, we have to score every time we get the football? I mean, as an offense, I think you always want to score every time you get the ball. Um, you want to lead the field with some type of points, either it be in three or, or, or six. Um, you want to get some type of points on the board. Um, and, you know, that shows signs of a very efficient offense. Offense can move the ball up and down the field. Um, and I think we've done a really good job of doing that the last few weeks. We showed that again uh, yesterday. Um, but, you know, those guys played a great game. Um, Offensive of line did a great job holding up and blocking. And um, the past uh, receivers did a great job. Joe played out of his mind. Um, you know, came up a little short. But, you know, again, you know, when you watch the film, like we just did a few hours ago, obviously in a win or a loss, there's always a lot of good and a lot of bad that you can get get better at. Um, so that's what we're trying to figure out and uh, continue to do. Yeah, I mean, Joe said right after the game that, man, they make things hard. You know, it's not easy playing against that defensive football team. We had some success, but they they made it challenging. He said, you know, it's not, not a walk in the park, so to speak. Those aren't his words, but – it's kind of like a summation of it, and that's the case. I mean, they've got uh, they've got they've got Pro Bowlers at every level of that defensive football yeah. team. That that's a good group, isn't it? Yeah, no, nah, it's a really good good uh, defense. I've I play them probably almost every year. Been in the league now, um, and they just find ways to continue to get better. They've, they've had a lot of the same guys, but then they add a lot of new guys at the same time. But they just fit the system so well. They understand it. They play it to a T. Um, and they don't really beat themselves, right? You got to you got to execute at a high level, um, and we knew that coming into that game. And you know, I thought we did that uh, for for a majority of that game for sure. Roquan Smith, they credited him with 15 tackles in that football game. I mean, they've got a really good interior defensive line. The two tackles, you know, keep him pretty free and clean. But man, he is so good diagnosing, and, and uh, there's no hesitation once he decides. Man, he's going to go, isn't he? 
Yeah, he's he's a he's a hell of a player. Um, you know, it's always you know you always get hyped up and you know think about the matchup. You know, especially as a running back, because that's the linebacks are pretty much the guys you're going up against mainly. Um, so you know, it's always good to you get on the field with a guy of that caliber. Um, who who can tell has so many different things that he does so well, um, and then he has those little things that he looks for in players, you know, give away, you know, play or different tells and stuff like that. So um, I think you think about that a little bit more sometimes when you play a guy like that. The thing I love about you is you're a complete running back. I mean, every phase of it, you you you, you are really really strong. I mean, you can run the football, catch, run routes, catch the football, and you're so physical. You know, as a blocker, as a former lineman, I love running bats that stick their nose right in there, man. And and you do. I mean, I, I don't care if it's a linebacker, a defensive tackle, defensive end, whoever it is, whatever the situation is, man, you're you're right there. And you'll stop people, you know, in their tracks to in the uh in the victory down there at Carolina. You stuck that defensive tackle and then saw Joe, you know, uh getting out of pocket a little bit and you slide to an area where he, you can take advantage of a situation, man. That that's really good stuff. I mean, where did that come from? That 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 will and that fire to compete against big bodies like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the will to compete against the big bodies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, definitely don't try to. I don't try to make a living doing that. Much. Right. Um, but you know, when it does happen, I try to make sure I put my best foot forward. Um, but you know, think pass pro is such a big thing. You know, obviously how the game has changed and, you know, you kind of throw the ball 90% of the game nowadays. Um, so as a back, you got to figure out a way to stay on the field. Um, you can't be, you know, I've always prided myself in being a guy who can be on the field for all three downs, um, including the fourth down. Um, so, you know, that's something I've always taken seriously. You know, my coaches, um, especially my coach, my running back coach in, uh, in college, um, you know, took a big deal of pass protection and I see now, you know, years later down the road, how big of a thing it was and is to this day for me still. So, you know, when I get my opportunity to, you know, go pass protect up with the big guys and keep, you know, the Joe clean and, you know, so he can go out there, you know, light it up and get the ball to the to the playmaking guys. Um, you know, I, I definitely take a, a lot of pride in that for sure. Against a very, very capable defensive football team like we talked about, Bengals offense has five drives of 70 yards or more five of them one of them was a one play drive you know jamar catches a you know back basically a sideways backward pass basically and takes it 70 but i mean other than that it was like multiple play some of them were quicker than others but it, sometimes you were grinding it sometimes it was big explosive plays but five of them of 70 yards or more against that football team and then in the third quarter you're seven for seven on third down you know, of different distances, but go seven for seven in two drives in the third quarter, that's pretty darn impressive stuff against a good defensive football team. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is. I think, like I said, you watch the film, there's a lot of good on there, a lot of bad. Um, but, you know, I think looking at the good, you know, like you said, you pointed out a lot of things there that we're doing really well. Um, and when you're doing that, executing at a high level like that versus a defense like that, like you said, um, it gives you all the confidence in the world as offense to go out there each and every week um, and really put our best foot forward. So, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of playmakers, a lot of guys who can do a lot of different things. A lot of guys who can touch the ball in different spaces and, you know, and, and make yards and, and things like that. And we got a hell of a quarterback leading the charge. So, you know, we just got to continue to do what we need to do on the side, on that side of the ball um, and continue to score points. Cause like I said, that's the main thing, no matter if it's a, zero to three game or, you know, 41, 38 game. We got to figure out a way to score points. Um, that's offense. And that's our main job. A, a game like that, um, your highest scoring uh, football game. And, and you're, you're on a, you're on a nice little, little run now in, in terms of uh, uh, points scored. You're averaging in the last three football games, uh, 30.7 points per game uh, by scoring 25, 33 and 34. And you had 38 to it. And that average is going to go up over the last four football games. I mean, uh, your most points that you've accumulated against against that football team, it, it, it's pretty impressive stuff. When you say that there's there's some things that can be improved upon, there's still meat in the bone. Is it just like um, small things that, you know, correct small things and then turn into big things for you? Yeah, you know, small things, you know, it could be, you know, missing a pass, 
uh, protection um, or missing a certain block or not fitting up a guy right in a block, um, you know, route death, you know, all these different things at each and every position, you know, we can walk out of there and say, yeah, we played a hell of a game offensively, but at the same time, we know we left a lot of, we didn't leave a lot of different things on the field, but we left things on the field and that's just life. I think you can, there's nobody perfect. You're not going to do anything perfectly. You strive to do that. So I think that's where that comes from is, yeah, we can continue to get better. You can, some people might say, well, you played pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Um, but I think, you know, that strive um, for perfection is, even though you know it's not probably going to happen, but that you striving for it, you know, then you kind of shrink those, uh, those outcomes of negative, negative plays. Yeah. And then uh, Joe Burrow went public, you know, in a press for saying that, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to go out there and my goal is to play a perfect game or as close to it as I possibly can, you know, against Baltimore. When you hear your quarterback, your leader say that, not that you don't try to every single, I mean, everybody's a professional athlete. Everybody's got pride. Everybody wants to do their job to the utmost and fullest. But when you hear your quarterback verbalize that a little extra juice, do you think? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like I said, he, he, he's the guy that leads the charge, um, you know, seeing him go out there and execute plays and the way he prepares day in and day out, um, you, you automatically, like you said, you automatically for one, or you want to do it for, you know, yourself mainly is in how you prepare, make sure you put, put it on tape and, you know, cause I in the sky never lies. So you want to make sure you put it on tape. Um, but when you have a guy like that, who's, who's played this position at a certain level um, for a while now, um, you know, that, that makes it even more fun, um, makes it even more, more real and, it, level, it raises your level of play. Against uh, the Baltimore Ravens defense in the red zone, three for three. And I think it was two for two in first and goal situation. It might have been three for three there as well. Uh, when the field shrinks like that and you're playing in a physical group like that to execute at that high a level, that has to be uh, encouraging. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, getting in the red zone, uh, one, is hard to get there. Right. Two, is even harder to score. <laughs> um, so when you can go three for three or three for four, or four for five, whatever it is, when you can go out there and finish in the end zone instead of kicking field goals each and every time, that's a big thing um, as offense. So, you know, our coaches do a great job of literally giving us all type of plays and the details that we need to go ahead and execute. And, you know, everyone who scored in the red zone yesterday did a great job of the details, everything that we stressed about Um during the week, they did a great job of doing that. And, you know, when you, when you trust the details and guys come out there and execute at a high level, um, you know, you, you turn those into a lot of points. You've been around the league uh, a bit now, and you got a couple of young rookies. Uh, one in the Kansas City game, you know, has a pass interference call that's tough. You know, on a fourth and 16, they get 26 yards out of it and end up losing that football game by a point. And then, uh, you know, you got a, a rookie punter who – uh, is the holder as well, and he has a little bit of difficulty on that uh, on the operation on that final field goal attempt. So you know you got you got young guys that uh, man, it's like this 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 league's hard. And um, it, it, you've been in that situation a lot. You, everybody who's played has been in a situation where oh man, if I yeah. had just done this, if I had just done that, how do you help young guys like that? How do you help young guys? Because you know, Dijon talked about how many guys you know supported him and uplifted him and I'm sure the same thing's going to happen for for Rico how, how do you uh how do you approach that yeah I think that's all you can do is support him right you know these guys are going to be in those positions again very guys that we're counting on um you know even though they're young guys um if you make it when you make it to this level you got to figure out a way to be a pro be a pro very very quickly um but you know I think guys are definitely going to surround surround those guys and you know like i said they're going to be in that position again whereas we're going to need them to come through um really doesn't matter what year you are you know you could be year year one year 10 um we're counting on every single you know everybody in the locker room um so that's what you got to always continue to be ready never take a rep for granted um still in reps mental reps if you're not even in make sure you're watching and getting that rep because you never know you know you're always an injury or or shoestring something away from being in that position to go ahead where the team is counting on you um, to, you know, deliver. So let's talk about your upcoming opponent because, um, you know, if, if anybody had told me 
the Bengals five games into the season would be 0-4 in the conference and 0-3 in the division, or 0-3 at home and 0-1 in the division, I would have been like, you're crazy. And and this this is a good, good football team. They're make let's make no mistake about it. Now it's time to, you know, string some together, get back on track, and your first opportunity to do it. You got to play 12 one game seasons is what it boils to now, right? You have to take them one at a time. So next opportunity, go play the Giants. And, you know, looking at some Giants numbers defensively, the first thing that hits me right in the face is uh, 22 quarterback sacks. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. 22 quarterback sacks. And they've got 11 different players that have been involved in those 22 quarterback sacks. The uh, Lawrence has six. He's a, he's a great player, uh, defensive lineman, but you, you've got five different guys with two or more sacks, seven different guys with a sack and a half. So uh, that obviously is something that you, you've got a quarterback that's playing at an extremely high level. He's a, uh, he's, you know, MVP candidate type level. I'm sure the New York giants are saying we got to stop the run and get after number nine, right? I mean, you, you got to think that uh, you got to be able to run the football against these guys, some in Akron, don't you? Yeah. Um, you know, as a running back, I think every week you really think that this is the week we need to run the ball um, to make things a lot easier. Um, but, you know, that part of it is not in our control, essentially. But uh, I think, you know, like you said, the number of 22 sacks in five games is, is uh, crazy. Um I know I know I've played that team before in the past and you know they got a really good um front four for sure in uh in, in Dexter Lawrence and uh Thibodeau and yep. uh Brian Burns. Yep. So these are guys who can play the run well as well and also at the same time play play the pass game really, really well. So Thibodeau, Lawrence and and Burns, they all can play the run as well. At the same time, they're really good at getting at the at the quarterback, obviously. Um, so the biggest thing, you know, when you look at that number, just looking at the number by itself, it's telling you you got to stay on track. You can't get in situations where you just allow them to, you know, pin their ears back and just rush at the quarterback. So, you know, being in second and in shorts and third and manageables and things of that nature to where they can't, you know, scheme up all these 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 different type of blisses and, you know, run all the picks and the games and stuff like that and, you know, make it really hard, try to isolate and get one-on-ones on certain things. Um, so, Definitely just being on, staying on track, keeping our offense uh, in the positive, um, and then, you know, everything else kind of take care of itself. Yeah, the Giants, they have a history of, of great defense. You know, Lawrence Taylor, Michael Strahan, you know, they've got these, you know, historically good defensive players. They have statues of them somewhere probably around that, uh, around that stadium. You, you just played a team, extremely physical football team, and New York Giants will be – at, at this at that level I mean they'll be that type of a defensive football team won't they they're gonna they're gonna get after it aggressively yeah absolutely um you know they have some momentum definitely as well coming off a win um yesterday um so playing in front of their home fans you know when you go on the road is always you know no matter who you're playing going on the road is always a lot tougher just because you know the home team has some momentum of being in front of their fans and stuff like that um but like I said they have a really good defense um you know the front four um, 58, Bobby Okereke, the linebacker is really, really good. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a good matchup for us, and we're definitely looking forward to it for sure. And uh, it, it, during the course of the football game against the Ravens, I thought, oh, man, that doesn't look good when your ankle got, you got twisted and rolled up like that. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I hope. And, and, and there you are out for a bit and back in the football game, I'm thinking this, this dude has to have the most flexible joints that I've ever seen. I mean, <laughs> that thing, that thing was like, that, that was been pretty darn good. I mean, it, it, it's uh how's it doing? How are you feeling the day after? Is it, did it stiffen up overnight for you? Yeah, definitely stiffened up. Um, yeah. You know, that's kind of the whole body. <laughs> like you right, said, right right. Here. Uh, definitely stiffened up, but you know, I go through my routine, you know, my Monday routine and you know get back in there tomorrow and get some more feel good work and stuff like that and um you know just kind of see from there but feel good overall man so I'm just happy and uh this football game Sunday night football uh I used to look forward to you know the nationally televised games Monday night football was the big deal with Howard Cosell and Dandy Don Meredith and all that and uh you know playing with those guys uh at the uh at the at the in the broadcast booth was 
was always a big deal. Although you don't want it to affect how you prepare and play in the football game in the back of your mind, you do know that a lot of eyes are watching, you know, do you get pumped up? Do you get geeked up and amped up to play in a nationally televised game like Sunday night football? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, growing up, you know, just watching those games and, you know, trying to stay up, you know, we got school the next day. <laughs> right. So trying to, yeah. So those are always um, really fun games. I think you get a lot more juice if something's, you, you know, you might be tired, you might be a little achy, certain areas or whatever from the week before, you know, you know, got football body, football neck, all that type of stuff. Definitely going into week six. But, you know, when you get a chance to play on a prime time, um, stage in front of a lot of people. You got a lot of family watching. More family gets to watch because, you know, your games aren't always streamed and everywhere. Um, so having more people be able to watch you and stuff like that, I think, you know, it raises the level of your team and the other team. Um, so it'll be it'll be a really good game for sure. And finally, um, played in a, in a game that was hot. I mean, it was it was hot on that football field. I, I, I can imagine on that on that field it heated up even even a little bit more and, and it was uh the adrenaline's flowing i mean so you end up breaking a sweat anyway with just the adrenaline you're going against a a, a tough opponent um so i i imagine that uh i mean you, you got to be tired but fact is you guys are in great shape i mean the, the level of play in that football game in the fourth quarter there were two highly conditioned and tremendous football shape playing against each other and that's got to carry over pretty well for you yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when you when you're in those conditions, you know, Coach Coach Taylor did a great job of simulating that um, to the best of his ability during camp. Um, and you know, playing those games, he knew what the schedule was going to look like, and you know what the weather usually is around that time here in uh, Cincy. So he did a great job of you know when it was a hot day, making sure we're you know in training camp, full pads, we're outside, and we're really getting it in, so we can go through those those things mentally can execute then. Um, so when you get a chance, like yesterday, to go out there hot, um, you know, you're on the turf, uh, you're wearing black jerseys, black cleats, black socks, you know, everything. <laughs> <laughs> the sun kind of grabs that little bit, even bit even more. Um, yeah. So, you know, did a great job of uh, simulating that for us so that way we can go out there mentally um, and execute when we had the opportunity yesterday. And final, final uh, question or thought. Uh, the Patriots, you know, I've got uh, relatives back in the in the Boston area, and they say that New England, all the all the writers in New England are saying, "Oh boy, there's a mutiny brewing." You know, the offense is pointing fingers at the defense, defense pointing the finger at the offense. You know, the Patriots after their victory against the Bengals, I guess they were thinking Super Bowl, and now they've lost four in a row. And uh, and the one thing that I always admire about this uh, this football team in this locker room and the organization, the coaching staff everybody has a healthy dose of respect for everybody else. I mean, it, it, this, this, uh, th this football team, you, you're not going to, you're not going to break that bond very easily at all. That's a big deal for this group, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, especially when I first came in, you know, you can tell it was a bond. Um, yeah. the guys enjoy playing with each other um, for one, um, you know, but I think the biggest thing is, you know, you definitely got to stay together. Um, you know, that message has been preached. Uh, obviously um, to, to us as well. Um, and the guys take a big, uh, you know, deal in that for, for sure. Um, because if you, if you, if you don't, you know, you can't complete anything by yourself, right? You, we need, we need those guys. Those guys need us. Um, we're, we're one um, at the end of the day, we all put the same Jersey on with the same name in the front um, and the same stripes on the helmet. So when you think about it like that, you know, you can't do it without them. So, we, we got to stay together. We are, we will. That's not something that anybody in the locker room is even worried about. Um, we just got to figure out a way to continue to get better um, and, and, and get in that win column and continuously do it uh, throughout the weeks. We appreciate you taking the time to join us. Uh, you know, in my mind, pound for pound, you're as tough a football player as there is in the National Football League. You're an intelligent football player. You're a heck of a human being, and we appreciate you giving us some of your time today. I know, I know it's not easy. I know there's a lot going on. The body's like, man, you know, and the uh, season hasn't started the way you had anticipated. You're a pro's pro. Appreciate you, man. Absolutely, my guy. Appreciate you having me on. You're the best. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, 
leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team. Opportunity knocking.